Apple recently announced that the iPadOS 14 public beta is available. But how is it performing on the iPad Pro 9.7 inch and what features are available? Let's start with the home screen. The only difference we see on the home screen is the new widgets right from iOS 14. They look really good and are a nice step up from last year's widgets. We can outsize them the way we want. However, you can't move them onto the middle of the home screen, which I don't see as a huge issue, but it would be nice to have the option. One thing I would like to see is being able to have the widgets pinned to the side for all pages on the home screen, not just the first one. We also don't have an app library on iPadOS 14, but it's not that important on an iPad. We also don't have the Translate app on the iPad, which makes no sense. There's also a new feature in iPadOS 14 called Compact UI. This is in many parts of the OS, but not in all. Spotlight Search now doesn't take up the full screen and looks way better with much richer search results similar to the Mac. Siri now also doesn't take up the full screen anymore and looks great in a new user interface. By default, you can't see what she heard from your voice, but if you turn on a setting in Siri and Search, you can see what she hears. If you want to edit what she heard, just tap on the text and a window pops up with the keyboard. You can now also send audio messages with Siri, which is a good change. However, I do think that the new Siri interface is flawed for one major reason. You can't talk to Siri and use your iPad at the same time. So what's the point of it being in the corner if you can't interact with the iPad? So overall, the new Siri UI looks great, but it doesn't work perfectly. We also got a new call UI, which finally does not take up the entire screen. You can still interact with the display though, so that's good. Hopefully we see that logic applied to the new Siri UI. There's also Compact UI in many other parts of the OS. For example, let's say your time is up for YouTube with screen time. If you tap ignore limit, you no longer get a pop-up and instead get a small menu. But hopefully this is applied everywhere such as low battery alerts and sending files with AirDrop. Safari also got a few upgrades. First of all, we now have a super cool privacy report. It shows you how many trackers each website uses that you visit. It also shows you what trackers you are using. Websites also load noticeably faster, which is a great improvement. You can also translate pages on Safari. I have also noticed some UI changes. At this point, I see no reason why to use Chrome when Safari is just so much faster and has better privacy. The Notes have also got a good upgrade with some new features. It looks nicer and it now also odor cracks shapes. So let's say I draw a square, but it's not perfect. If I just hold for a couple more seconds, it makes it perfect. You can also copy handwriting. So let's say I write the tech person, I can just hold on it and copy it as text or as handwriting. I can then just paste this anywhere, which is just amazing. You can also detect information. So let's say I write a phone number or a date. You notice that it gets underlined and you can hold on it to take action on that information. For example, create a contact for the phone number or create a reminder or calendar event for that date. This is a cool feature, but I don't see myself using it very often or at all. The good thing though, is that it works with your finger or with any stylus. It's not just exclusive to the Apple Pencil. There's also a new feature called Scribble. This requires an Apple Pencil, but that is understandable since it wouldn't be possible without one. This allows you to write in any text field with the Apple Pencil. It is a cool feature, but even if I had an Apple Pencil, I still wouldn't use it because it's just way faster to type. Voice Samuels also has a few cool features. You can now create folders to organize your recordings, and you can now enhance your recordings with a single tap. I have tested this, and I can confirm it works pretty well. All black elements have now been replaced with white in light mode, so it's more consistent when switched to dark mode. Messages also got a huge upgrade in iPadOS 14. You can now pin up to 9 conversations, which is a great change. You can also mention people in their inline replies. My favorite feature though is the pinned conversations. We also get the new sidebars, which are a great change to the iPad. It's way more organized, which results in easier navigation in the app. For example, in the photo tab, you no longer have to go to the albums tab, then select an album. It's all in one place. This is pretty much copied from Mac OS, and it's a great change. The files tab also gets the new sidebar, but the files are now in a smaller and tighter grid, which is great and it feels more like a desktop with this change. The camera app also got some small and noticeable upgrades. First of all, you can now finally change your video resolution within the app, and I have noticed that taking pictures feels slightly faster. Switching the camera to the front or back also looks like the new iPhones. You can also mirror the front camera in the settings, which I like. You also get the sound recognition feature, which, which can notify you when there is a certain noise in the background. For example, if water is running, you will get a notification, or if a fire alarm sounds, you will get a notification. This will be very useful when wearing noise-canceling earbuds, such as AirPods Pro, or for people who can't hear well. There are also a lot of new privacy features. For example, now if you paste something you've copied, it will get a banner. This may not seem like a privacy feature, but it is. Many apps have been caught spying on clipboards with this feature. You can now also just give access to just photos you want instead of all photos and apps. 
You also don't need to share your exact location with apps. Instead, you can just share your approximate location in apps that may not need your exact location. iCloud Keychain also tells you which passwords need to be changed. A dot also shows up at the top of the screen whenever an app is using your microphone or camera. It also shows you which app used the micro camera in the control center, so great changes in the privacy department. I'm also noticing a lot of smaller changes, such as a slightly different settings app, the ability to add captions to photos, which is a great change, slightly different animations when there's a notification, different animation when opening a folder, and screenshots show up much faster when taking them. There's also a new color picture when marking up screenshots, documents, or photos. So these are pretty much all the changes in iPadOS 14. What's great though is that they are all available on the iPad Pro 9.7 inch. And finally, we made it to the last thing on the list, performance and bugs. This is important and makes it or breaks it for an iOS or iPadOS update, but iPadOS feels about the same as iPadOS 13. It just feels a tiny bit more stuttery in some areas, but nothing major. Keep in mind this is an early beta, and it will greatly improve as always. Surprisingly, this beta is performing amazingly in terms of bugs. That doesn't mean there are no bugs whatsoever, but the bugs that are present are very minor. The biggest bug I have noticed is the other storage. I usually use about 35GB on my iPad, but after the update, I use 90GB, which is just crazy. The buggiest part of the interface is the new widgets. Sometimes one of them just randomly disappears, and when I switch back and forth between light and dark mode, the widgets don't change until about an hour later. But unlike last year with iPadOS 13, I haven't had a single respring, but there was slight overheating, but it's totally usable with no super major issues. The battery life is worse than iPadOS 13.5.1. I'm getting about one hour less screen on time. That's pretty bad considering I wasn't getting amazing battery life in iPadOS 13.5.1. So in conclusion, this is a great update. It's not super major like iPadOS 13, but it's not like iOS 12. So I would say it's kind of major. So if you have been thinking of getting the public beta for the iPad Pro 9.7 inch, I would say it depends. If you're okay with some minor bugs, but mainly the storage bug, and worse battery life by about one hour, then I would say it's not a bad idea. Performance is good though. And of course, the feature set is incredible. I really like this update, and I can't wait for the final version. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.